Hello guys and welcome to geek for geeks In this video, we are going to talk about if and switch statements in Go programming language. I hope you are excited, so let's get started. An if statement is a control structure that causes a block of code to run under certain conditions. It consists of conditions followed by a block of code and the code in the block is run only if the condition is true. So here we have a if statement and the condition is the literal boolean value trick which of course evaluates to true. So the code here in the block does get executed and it prints out the string true. You can see that down here in the output. Here's another if statement where the condition is a similar boolean value and the value false. Of course false is not true. So the code in the block does not run. You don't see false down here in the program output. Here is an if statement with the actual comparison operator. The result of is 1 less than 2 is true. Therefore the code in the block runs and it prints out the string 1 is less than 2. You can see that here in the output. And here's another comparison. Is 1 greater than 2? Well, the result of that value is false and so the block does not run. The Go programming language has many of the same boolean operators that other languages do. For example, there's the NOT operator, the exclamation point which takes whatever boolean value it's given and negates it. So if you receive a value true, it will turn it into a false. So this if statement, the result is false and therefore this code would not run. But this one takes the value false and makes it true. With the result to be true, the code in the block does run and you see that it prints not false down here. Here, the operator looks to ensure that the value on both the side of it is true. So, we have a value that is true on the left but false on the right. Therefore, the entire expression is false because both the values are not true. However, down here we have a true on the left as well as true on the right. Therefore, true doubles and true is the result and thus the code gets run. You can see it on the output. The operator with two vertical bar here is read as the OR operator. It will return a value true if either the value on its left or the value on its right is true. So since the first value here on the left is true, there is no need to evaluate the value on the right. The result of this expression is true and it prints this line down here in the output. The case is same here. The value on the left is true and the value on the right is true. But that doesn't matter. If either one of those had been true, the result would be true and the code here in the if block would have run. And again, you can see it in the output. The else block goes after the if block and it runs only if the if block did not run. So here we have an if block and its condition is true. So it does run. It prints the expression if down here in the output. But what if we change this to a false so that it doesn't run? Let's try saving this. Run this. Now that we have changed this to false, the if block doesn't run. So the else block does. And you see else printed out here on the output. You can also use if else block. So in this code, the condition in the if statement is true. And so the format print line if statement gets run. But if we were to change that to false and rerun it, then the if statement doesn't run. So it checks if the if else clause which it sees is true and because that's true, it will go ahead and run this block. If we were to change that to false as well, save that, rerun it. Now the if clause is false. The else if clause is also false and therefore it runs the else clause and prints else. Now, as before, this code within the curly braces following the condition of an if statement is a block. And that means all the same rules regarding the scope of a variable applies. So down here, where we access this variable, that's fine because this variable gets declared before the if block here. And therefore, it's still within the scope afterwards. But here, where we try to print within the if variable, that's not okay because it gets defined within the block for the if statement and therefore 
it's out of the scope down here. So, if we try to run this, we will see a compile error undefined within if on this line. To choose between several different options using the if else state, you would have to nest some of them several deep, which could be hard to read. So, most programming languages, including Go, offers a switch statement. You specify the expression you want to switch on, case statements which possible values for that expression and then code that would run on each case. You can also add the default case at the end that will run if none of the other cases match. So up here, we have initialized the door number variable with the integer value 2. And we are going to switch on the value that is in door number. So we got the case statement here for possible values of door number. If the door number was set to 1, we would print the string new car. But up here it's actually set to 2. So it's going to match the case here, case number 2. It's actually set to 2. So it's going to match this case here, case number 2. And it means that this code here will run. It will print the string a lemma. So if we try running this down here, we will see you win a lemma. Let's try going up here in the code and setting it to 1 so that you can see the other case as well. Try running this again. This time you can see we won a new car. And if we set it to some completely different value, let's say we pick out door number 99. In that case, none of the cases here will match and therefore the default case will run instead and it will print you win a go. Let's change this back to door number 1 up here. In some languages, the case after the selected case will also run unless you insert a break statement at the end of the case. In Go, only the selected case runs by default. So, if we select door number 1, only door number 1 will run. But you can run the next case as well if you explicitly include a fall through keyword. So, let's type fall through here and try rerunning it. And now we win both a new car and a lemma. Well, I guess this is the end of the video guys. I hope you like this video. If so, drop a like. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.